Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer for Saturday the 31st of July. As we start, we remember God's call uh, to have a Sabbath, to rest, to have balance in life. So we remember Jesus' words. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So take a moment, perhaps to put down any burdens, at least for a while. Perhaps thinking of them as shopping bags. Just let your fingers relax. And then perhaps as you might just relax in anyone else's company, relax in God's. For this time, for the whole day ahead. A look back at the last 24 hours and perhaps think about where God has been with you, where you might not have noticed in this last 24 hours. Give thanks for everything that has been good. And as uh, um, Sue Harvey comes to uh, the end of, I think, nearly 20 years working and serving in our church office. I just give thanks for her, um, for the way she's gone the extra mile, but for her humour, her laughter, her helpfulness. So we pray for God's healing and God's way forward for anything uh, that troubles us or makes us sad. I'd like us to pray for uh, Simone Biles, the Olympic gymnast, favourite to win gold and stepping down because of well, mental health issues, if I've understood it correctly, meaning she simply couldn't do what she tried to do safely. As we pray for her, let's pray for any others known to us suffering with mental health. I can't understand what it would be like for Simone Biles. <laughs> I'm, I'm not and never likely to be under that sort of expectation. We don't know what it's like for those around us. Let's pray for them and treat them with gentleness and respect. So Father, we pray for all who work in the NHS and the care sector, for those on our hearts this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for our world, for good governments, for countries, companies and charities to work together for the common good. For an end to the coronavirus. For clean water and education for all. For an end to climate change. For peace especially in the Yemen, in Syria, Afghanistan, and in Israel and the Palestinian territories. For justice, especially where governments are corrupt and where societies are racist. For healing. Father, we know we ask for extraordinary things, yet you are an extraordinary God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And Father, we rejoice that you call us to be your children and to be part of an amazing family. We thank you for all our local churches. We pray for our worship and fellowship this Sunday and every day. For our plans and concerns for coming back to normal. We pray especially for those who don't have access to the internet. For our work with children and young families. For the need to start again, uh, perhaps start differently. Lord, for your wisdom, for you to take what we can give and grow your kingdom, bring your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To consider the day ahead of you, what you're looking forward to and what worries you. Let us offer to God what we can and trust him to provide what we need. And I'd value your uh, prayer just for, well, finishing a sermon for Sunday. And for I'm having part of a day off to catch up with friends, some who I've not seen for ages. Almighty God, thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light upon our paths and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the door frame. None of you shall go out of the door of your house until morning, when the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians. You will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame and will pass over that doorway and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean? to you. Tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bowed down and worshipped. The Israelites did just what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. The context of, of this reading is, of course, very difficult, and I have many questions uh, about what we do theologically with God apparently striking down the firstborn of the Egyptians. As I've said before, what we know for certain is that in the New Covenant, Jesus took the Passover and did it so differently. Instead of the Passover lamb being sacrificed, Jesus himself willingly offered up his life. Instead of striking down the enemy, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. But I haven't just skipped over these passages because it's important, it gives us context for the New Testament. And one of the crucial parts is that the Israelites were commanded to remember. They were commanded to remember. 
And when they remembered, they went in the right direction. When they forgot, they forgot God. So when perhaps we, this Sunday, break bread, when we are frustrated because we can't drink wine as we used to, we remember all that Jesus did for us. The depth and breadth of God's love revealed on the cross, the glory of the resurrection. And may that keep our lives walking in his way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, breath of life, come sweeping through us. Revive your church with life and power. O oh, breath of life, come cleanse, renew us, and fit your church to meet this hour. O oh, wind of God, come bend us, break us, till humbly we confess our need. Then, in your tenderness, remake us. Revive, restore, for this we plead. O oh, breath of love, come breathe within us, renewing thought and will and heart. Come, love of Christ afresh to win us. Revive your church in every part. Revive us, Lord, is zeal abating, while harvest fields are vast and white. Revive us, Lord, the world is waiting. Equip your church to spread the light. The Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings, and guide us to do always what is right in your eyes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray with confidence. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon the throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you, this day and always. Amen. Thank you for playing with me, uh, and perhaps for me. I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.